Welcome to this short section on stretching out your legs. Now, if you do a lot of sitting or your legs are quite stiff, then this can really affect your lower back, your pelvic floor, and of course, so much more. So join me for this short workout, stretching your legs in all direction and mobilizing your hip joints. Ideally, you have a reasonably hard chair. And um, yeah, that's all you need, really. So make your way to the front edge of the chair so that you can really feel your sit bones and have your feet underneath your knees. Sit bones pushing into the chair, crown of the head reaching up so that you've got that long, neutral spine. And then roll a little bit to the back of the sit bones. Notice how your belly scoops a little, but keep the crown of the head reaching up. And then come to sitting on the sit bones and lean a little bit forward. Notice how you're moving from the hip joint. So you go back, you roll to the back of the sit bones, your belly scoops a little, the lower back lengthens, but the crown of the head stays upright. And then you come onto the sit bones and you come forward and you really must make sure you come forward with a straight spine. Don't let your back collapse. So let's involve the legs. Step your right leg forward, flex the foot. So that gives you a bit more of a hamstring stretch, hamstring and back of the calf. Hands on your thighs. And then do that leaning forward, keeping your sit bones reaching down, crown of the head reaches upwards. And then you come back and you round a little bit. So the back rounds your belly scoops, but your crown of your head stays upright. So this is just a little bit the lower back. And again, coming forward, come back upright. And you roll a bit to the back of the sit bones, belly scoops a little, lower back lengthens, and back. And just do that a few times. And just make sure that you only go to a position where you feel a stretch, but it feels quite comfortable. So if you're very tight, this might be your limit. If you're very flexible, you might be able to go all the way forward. Just really go where it's fine for you. Scooping the belly a little, roll back, come upright. And as you lean forward, make sure you've got that neutral spine so you don't let your back collapse. That's really important. And then change over to the other leg. So left leg forward, flex the foot. And then just come a little forward as if you're looking for something in front of you. And you come back onto the sit bones and you round a little, you scoop your belly a little, crown of the head stays upright, back, and really work where it's comfortable for you. So find a little bit of effort but it shouldn't be so painful that you scream, especially if you're in an office, but actually generally not. So you're rolling your pelvis so that you come to the front of the sit bones. And then you're rolling to come a little to the back of the sit bones. And your spine stays really nice and long as you come forward. And then step that leg back and just sense in how that feels. And then we're gonna take the leg to the side and work the inner thigh muscles a little. Now be a little mindful if you've had a hip replacement because we don't want internal rotation, internal rotation being this, and also if you find it too much on the knee. So step the leg out, toes face up, knee faces up. And if you cannot roll in because of a restriction of the hip, and especially a hip replacement, you just pulse a little here and just focus on the tiny movement. So don't let your leg rotate in. 
Otherwise, rotate the leg in so the knee and toes face forward and bring them back. And you really want to find that rolling from the leg in the hip joint there. And if you find that's uncomfortable on your knee, just stay with this out movement. And remember, this is not for people with hip replacements. So really important. Listen to your body, but sometimes your body might not tell you that easily. So just then really keep it small. Keep the leg facing upward. And then rock a bit forward again, the same length in the spine. And then scoop your belly round a little back. And again, coming forward. And you scoop your belly a little, you roll to the back of the sit bones. Really small movement if there is a stiffness. And we want to feel a little stretch in the muscles, but no pain. Forward and back. Now, remember, if you're not allowed to do internal rotation, which is this, you stay like that. Otherwise, turn your foot forward. Make sure that the knee is also in that same direction as the toes. You don't want torsion in the knee. And then you do the same here. You come forward and you do a little scooping to come back. Now, unless you've got a restriction in the hip, that slight internal rotation is really very nice. It, I find it really useful for my own sacroiliac joint, um, but just work with what's right for your body. You come forward and you come back. And notice I'm using my hands to really support my core here. Turn the foot up again before you bring it back and step it back in again. And then we do the other side, step the leg out, toes up. And remember, if you are restricted, you just do a little tiny pulsing here, minutest movement. But if you're not, you can roll a bit forward and back and find that movement from the leg in the hip socket. And restriction might mean that you have, you know, you've had an operation, but also if it's tight, then you just, do what feels comfortable to you. Make sure that the knee and the toes are going in the same direction and that the movement really comes from the hip joint, not from that lower leg. So don't push the foot and let the knee have some torsion. Really, it has to come from here. If there is any problem in your knee, just keep with that small movement. Keep the foot up and then lean forward. And then scoop your belly a little, roll to the back of the sit bones. And again, you come forward and you scoop and come a little back. And again, so you're rolling your pelvis and wherever it's comfortable for you. And one more. Now you can stay with that or have a rest or turn your foot forward. Little toe can be down. Make sure the knee is facing in the same direction as the toes. So the movement comes from the hip. And again, you come forward and you scoop a little to come back. And that's much harder. So just really work where it's comfortable for you. Now I find that a really delicious for my sacroiliac joint, but we all have different bodies. And again, forward and scooping. So this can be really nice for the really lower back, stretching all that out. It's also the tiny muscles in the buttock that move the leg, also connect to the pelvic floor. So all those leg, that leg mobility, that hip mobility is really important for the pelvic floor. Come back, turn the foot up again before you slide it in. So that's a safer way of coming back. So we've now stretched up the back of the legs. We've stretched up the side. Now the front of the legs remains. 
So this is a little bit more challenging if you have foot mobility issues. So make it as small as you need it to be. It's a seated lunge. So rock a little bit over towards the right side of the chair. Step your right leg behind and just do that. If you have any restrictions, maybe this is where you can only go. But if you can, you're in this position where the knee is actually underneath your hip. And you're on the big toe joint or the, the ball of the big toe. And you have your hands on your hips and you do that same rocking a little forward and you roll to the back of the sit bones. You rock forward and you rock to the back of the sit bones. And here, the challenge is usually when we roll to the back of the sit bones because that stretches this out a little more. If you feel this is really easy, you can step the leg even further away. The further the foot is away, the more you get the stretch in the front of the thigh. But really be mindful about your lower back. Sometimes this can really stretch out too much. So can you still keep your spine in a neutral as you come forward rather than arching your back? Now very slowly shift out of this. Slow, slow, slow. Just feel back into that. And then we do the other side. So step now your left foot back and really just find your position. Be on the big toe, hands on your pelvis or maybe on the thigh and you rock a little forward and you scoop to come back. Make sure that you're not overarching your back. We still want to work the pelvis. So that's important that we're still working the pelvis. And our back stays in that neutral position. We don't let our belly pop forward, our ribs pop. So we, we really find that length. The crown of the head reaches up. Sit bones reach down. And the further back your foot is, the more challenging this can be. And find your breath with it. Never stop breathing. And again. And then slowly step that foot back. And now that can have been quite challenging on your lower back. So again, scoop your belly and come a bit forward. And scoop your belly and back, just easing out. And if you can, now this is much more challenging, then let's do a little buttock stretch. This is... Um, piriformis stretch, the piriformis is a little buttock muscle, but this is quite challenging. So cross your leg over, have your knee open. Now, again, if, the, if this hurts in the knee, don't do this, just finish it here, you've done enough. And then you lean forward with that long back a little, and then you scoop to look, go a little bit back. You go a little forward. You actually grow up. You grow tall. Crown of the head reaches up. And you go back. Crown of the head reaches up. Your spine stays really long. By now you should know that I'm really working on this and um, stretching up as the sit bones melt down. And then change over, doing the other side. So cross the left ankle over the right knee, knee is open, make sure it's in a comfortable position. Hands can hold on here and you can fold a bit forward and you roll a bit back. And as you roll forward, don't let your chest pop forward, lengthen, keep that long spine. So you lengthen up, as you come forward. If that's too much, you can just lengthen up and roll back. 
the forward is not important. It's just for those who feel, oh yeah, this is a little bit better. And again. And then slowly step your foot down. And you've worked all the muscles of the hip joint, hopefully a really mobile hip, all of it in sitting, really beneficial for your lower back, for your pelvic floor and so much more. <laughs> 